So we are going to have seven temples here. In, in the, yes, in, in this area, just outside Parkota, there will be separate temples, not together. Seven separate temples will be built. This whole structure में iron कहीं नहीं इस्तेमाल हुआ है क्योंकि iron की life जो है वो 94 95 years होती है हम तो thousand years का temple बना रहे हैं three thousand five hundred labour is working day and night people of my generation even your generation younger generation and many generations who have gone they never ever thought that the Ram Temple will be a reality. Not a single pie has come from any government agency for the construction of the temple. The first Land Acquisition Act, it was implemented with the advice, aid and advice of ministers and myself. But the beauty of this Prime Minister is, when I went to tell him that, please do not issue the third ordinance on this matter, he looked at me. He said, you are telling me? Not even once he would use the word you guys are responsible. Take he the takes fault. the full responsibility for what happens. His speech on my farewell, I couldn't believe. I was in tears. The cabinet ministers and secretaries to the government who were invited, they couldn't believe. Prime Minister spoke for 45 minutes and he spoke only about me. Namaste Jai Hind, you're watching or listening to another edition of the ANI podcast with Smita Prakash. Thank you for liking, subscribing and sharing with people who you think will benefit from these conversations. My guest today has been entrusted with the task of completing the construction of the Ram Temple in Ayodhya. Mr. Nrupendra Mishra is one of the most experienced bureaucrats of our times. He was Principal Secretary in the Prime Minister's office from 2014 to 2019. In the second term of Prime Minister Modi, when Mr. Mishra asked that he be relieved of his duties in the PMO, the Prime Minister accepted his resignation and tweeted, Nrupendra Mishra is among the most outstanding officers who has a great grasp of public policy and administration. When I was new to Delhi in 2014, he taught me a lot and his guidance remains extremely valuable. Unquote. Mr. Mishra couldn't really hang up his boots because he was soon appointed as the chairman of the Executive Council of the Nehru Memorial Museum and Library and then as chairman of the Ayodhya Ram Mandir Construction Committee. So let's get chatting with the man himself who's entrusted with this task. He has to complete the construction of the Ram Temple by January 2024. Mr. Mishra, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. I'm uh, delighted that you could find the time and uh, come to the studio here because uh, I know that the deadlines are really sharp <laughs> with the Pran Pratishta to happen in January 2024. So I'm uh, guessing that uh, your work is like literally 24-7 to keep an eye on everything. Uh, but before I begin to ask you about the timelines and the construction process. Uh, one question uh, which, you know, for our overseas viewers and for our young viewers who are not, uh, who are not very um, aware, would I say, of what it means to install a deity, what it means to do a Pran Pratishta. It's not just bringing a, um, a deity and mm -hmm. keeping there. What does the process mean? Uh, I know uh, neither you nor I are uh, priests, but, uh, but you know, uh, a person who is the man in the hot seat, I'd want you to explain a little bit about what the process is. Actually, you know, it's a good question. And uh, as you said, particularly for those who are not in some manner mm, sort of educated will be a wrong word, but they have not yet... Uh, you know, um, have developed the kind of belief so. that people who are there hmm. and are attached with the temple will have. So, now the process is that uh, consecration means that, that the murti which is being sculpted today at the moment in Ayodhya hmm. and uh, Hopefully, it will be ready by middle of December. And um, 
we are going to have one of the three which is being sculpted there. So that will start its journey of consecration sometime around the second week of January. Mm -hmm. The journey starts with a dip in Saryu River. The Murti will be yeah. taken to the Saryu River. Yeah. Okay. And it could be any date. I am not sure because that is the area which trust looks after. Mm -hmm. And more particularly, as you said, the priests would be taking care of that. But after the journey and to that place, it is believed that Lord, the child Ram, would like to visit the various temples which existed then okay. in Ayodhya. Prachin Mandir. Yeah. Hmm. So whatever temples are there today in Ayodhya, in the form of a procession, hmm. Lord would be, child Ram would be going in some kind of a chariot and stopping at some of the key temples of Ayodhya. Hmm. And then finally, the deity or the whatever is carved, child Ram, that will enter the premises of the temple area. So, in this, it will enter from the eastern gate. Is that the eastern gate? Uh, it's not decided as yet? Yeah. Like this is, the eastern gate is this and the devotees would enter from there. Enter from there. And where will the deity yeah. be? Yeah. So, I am coming to that, hmm. to your question. Hmm. Uh, the entrance for the child Ram, the chariot will enter from Oh. This portion. Okay, not from here. No. Okay. And of course, it is not open to public. Ah. The whole uh, ceremony uh -huh. is not open to public. It will somewhere take place very early in the morning. Okay. And then the deity will be placed in the sanctum sanctorum. Garb you know, yeah. Hmm. So it's a three-story structure. Is that structure complete? Uh, only the ground floor. Okay. What we have promised is that the ground floor, which is here, mm -hmm. going like this, along with five mandap. These are mandaps. Okay. Right? Yeah. Five. Along with the five mandaps will be ready in January of 2024. Right. I interrupted you, sir. So, it will be taken to the Garbhagriha. Right. Hmm. And it enters the Garbhagra and what they do is, uh, the belief is that the Pran Pratishtha would enable the Lord to see the devotees hmm. and the devotees would be able to worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. So for that time, some kind of a band on his eyes Oh. That is put. Huh. So from the date the entry is there till the date of consecration, mm -hmm. that is there, the band. How interesting. And it really is opened when the Pran Pratishtha consecration has taken place. And the belief is that from then on, he attains the qualities of a lord, of a god, or supernatural person. Okay. So that is the belief. Mm -hmm. So transferring from a normal to a exceptional uh -huh. is the process which is consecration prayers. And final chanting of mantras, opening of the band, and then he is now exposed to the world. And universe. That is the final consecration which will be on 22nd of January 2024. 
right two <clears throat> questions that emerge which uh, i'm sure uh, people who haven't followed uh, it in the news completely uh, would have is uh, what you said is that the uh, the idol is being sculpted right now in ayodhya uh, one of the three idols so then that needs to be uh, explained to some of our viewers who don't know the details because many would say that isn't ram lalla's idol already there baby ram's idol already there so why is it being sculpted and if there's a new idol which is coming what happens to the earlier idol okay. it is true the belief is and this belief is from 1947 49 that ram lalla appeared there hmm. that is a belief so that is the present in a temporary hut meant which is there the lord is there and the prayer of that lord ram child ram has been going uninterrupted hmm. you may be surprised to know that since 1947 when the first news flashed in ayodhya that the lord has appeared at this place the prayer regular prayers of the lord has never been interrupted hmm now your question that you already have a lord then why do you want to have another lord it's true we thought of it one reason was that people who will come now will have a darshan from a certain distance which will be minimum about 25 to 30 feet so in order to meet the eyes of the lord with the person who is doing the prayer and uh, in order to see the feet of the lord there has to be another creation another lord which has to be sculpted and that is why it was decided that we will have a standing hmm. statue correct there. i've seen <clears throat> ram lalla statue i've been to ayodhya a couple of times and uh, i've had the good fortune to see it's so, I, i saw it as a journalist uh, you know to see that what is it that made so much news can i see the statue to badi mushkil se pehli baar i went out there to see it and uh, when i saw ram lalla i was like इतने छोटे तो दिखाई भी नहीं दे रहे थे बिकॉज <laughs> वो एक केज सा बना हुआ जिया, था जिया. तो वो दिखते नहीं है और वो यूं देखते हैं विद इन अ फ्यू मिनट्स यू हैव टू लीव यू सी बिकॉज द सिक्योरिटी वो सो हाई एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम बिकॉज दे वो सो मच थ्रेट टू दैट एरिया और फिर वैसे भी जर्नलिस्ट जब आते हैं तो द सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेज आर सस्पिशियस ऑफ आज तो छोटा सा एंड यू कैन बेली सी द लॉर्ड bahut chote hain the murti is very little at the moment hmm. all those who come ji hardly get to see huh. in fact they only see it on the television screen oh because there is a yeah. television huh. so while moving on and as you rightly said the police manages the crowd yeah. so they are moving very fast from there perhaps they just see that they are on the screen correct so yeah. from that point of view also it was thought Huh. but then your question what will you do to that present lord uh uh-huh. the sanctum sanctorum is going to have a place for standing ram child ram who is of the age 4 to 5 years okay and just in front of that will be the present lord baby who be huh. and the distinction is that one is called achal murti achal okay. means it will never from now on move okay so the prand pratishtha which is being done that will be the achal murti it will not move out from the sanctum sanctorum that's the standing one yeah baby standing one. standing one Wo and what is being what will come on that day it will come on 22nd of january from the present temple it will move to the sanctum sanctorum that is called utsav murti what is the meaning of utsav murti is festival. that there could be occasions when in a festival the trust decides 
to take the procession of the Lord Ram, uh -huh. like you have in Jagannath Puri. Jagannath, got it. So then, Utsa Murti will go. Okay. But not the Achal, Achal Murti. Huh. So that is how both the Murtis, they will be there in the Sanctum Sanctorum. And there will be regular prayer and all the other ceremonies of the Lord, both for them separately. Achha. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So they will be prayed and there will be prayer for the existing and there will be a prayer for the... And both the Murtis will be in the Sanctum Sanctorum? Yes. Both will be there? Yes. So, when we go forward, you know, uh, when we put bow our head before the Murtis, we'll be bowing, bowing our head before both the Murtis? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And both will be visible yes, clearly? Yes, yes, yes. They will be very clearly visible. Perhaps better visibility to the standing one. Huh. But you will be able to see what was there from okay. 1947 onwards, which is supposed to have suddenly come out huh. there at the site. Prakat and hoi. Pragat ho gaye. And the second one is the one which is going to be now installed mm -hmm. and consecration will take place. Right. Now you <coughs> said there are three murtis. Uh, are these three murtis made of different uh, material? Like, is it granite, marble, bronze, brass, gold? What is what? You are see, the... that process was a bit technical. Ji. The first thing that we were very careful was that the stone which is chosen hmm. must have certain minimum uh, chemical qualities. Hmm. For example, it must not absorb water. Okay. It must not react to the carbon which is mm. there in the atmosphere because all that will affect the durability, the life mm. of the statue. So with all those qualifications, we got the stones first collected. Mm. Those stones came from Jaipur. They also came from uh, South Krishna Shila, hmm. granite, you mentioned. And they were all tested by National Institute of Rock Mechanics. Hmm. It's the Government of India Institute, is specializing only on sort of doing the tests of various stones and determining their strength. Hmm. It is in Mysore, Karnataka. Okay. So all these stones were tested. And after that, Three stones which were selected, one from ja uh, Jaipur, which is a marble, and two Krishna Shila from two places of Karnatak, that has come. And that, these three were given to three different sculptors. Okay. And they, at the moment, uh, they have been working for the last two months, and at the moment they are working on that. Okay. And they will it must finally be under. Deliver. Uh, extreme secrecy. Oh, so yes. That... Oh, yes. Huh? No one visits. No one takes photograph. No video. Nothing okay. is there. And it is being carved under... So, uh, why... Uh, I, a question would... Uh, of course, I can understand that um, <coughs> the reason why all this is being done is that we want that those murtis to survive hundreds of years from now. Abhi ban rahi but wo... 100, 150, 300, whatever, salo tak chale. You know, that it, there shouldn't be anything which harms those. Why not the ashtadhatus which have lasted for so long? Why not metal? Ek to hum logon ne metal ka istemali nahi kiya. Aapko Ji. jankari hogi ki is pure structure mein iron kahi nahi istemal hua hai. Because? Kyunki iron ki life jo hai wo 94-95 years hoti hai. Hmm. हम तो थाउजेंड ईयर्स का टेंपल बना रहे हैं तो अष्टधातु के बनते हैं आपने बिल्कुल सही कहा बहुत से भगवान की मूर्तियां अष्टधातु की हैं लेकिन यहाँ पे इट वाज थॉट दैट लेट अस कंसंट्रेट ऑन द स्टोन द इंटायर स्ट्रक्चर इज आल्सो ऑफ स्पेशल स्टोन सो वी वुड फोकस ऑन द स्टोन एंड नॉट इट वॉज डिबेटेड एंड फाइनली आफ्टर द डिबेट इन द ट्रस्ट Uh, the some of the saints, sages who are member of the trust, they uh, expressed in favor of a stone statue. Okay. Yeah. 
right. more from the durability point of view than anything else before i ask the next question here is a short primer about uh, the specs of the temple which is uh, under construction now uh, which is the area and things like that so please watch this primer the total area is 2.7 acres built up area is 57000 square feet the height of the temple including the peak is 161 feet it has three floors with the height of each floor being 20 feet so abhi aap uh, mujhe agar explain kare that uh, how many artisans are working in this area um you can explain the plinth and you can explain the various structures how long uh, have they been working because i have been there several times in the past 15 years and i've been seeing jo pillar construction ho rahe the and you know they were just lying there jo uh, eent aaye the that also story i had covered jo har jagah se log leke aaye the you know that one one yes, yes, train one mein, from every village from every village jisme likha hua tha <clears throat> ram, ram and from so i covered that story i mean it's dating me right now people will know how old i am but i covered all those stories and i covered that pillars which were lying there and wow, that entire area was infested with monkeys they were like it was scary to go and shoot there also when i used to take the camera dar lagta tha uh, to shoot because pure bandar hi bandar the wahan pe one of the reason we have went provided the solar supply of power is because there are so many monkeys yeah that is a menace throughout ayodhya yeah. and you can do nothing about them there is a certain feeling about it yes so reverence yeah. so because of that uh, we avoided to do uh, yeah uh, yeah the solar uh, supply of power my goodness okay so now um, so you know the question about how long the construction has been going on is an i guess it's an qu- answer that can you can date it back to god knows how many years but actual construction uh, or kitne log yahan pe kaam kar rahe hain kahan kahan se aaye ye uh, artisans craftsmen scientists archaeologists jo bhi uh, specific areas ke hain wo hame samjha dijiye mm, first of course the construction hmm. you know prime minister mr modi he I mean, we don't say laid the foundation, but the shubharam of the construction is started by him, and that was fifth of August, two thousand twenty. So the real construction, the trust was formed in the February of two thousand twenty, after the Supreme Court judgment in November nineteen, and then the trust came into being, and then. my existence was recognized that as chairman of this construction committee so all this happened in february and august prime minister came so the construction started you asked a very good question and in fact i am smiling a little bit more than normal because today i got the news that they have got 3500 labor there was a huge shortage of labor which suddenly happened because of the festival season ah correct and that was adversely in some manner slowing down the construction <laughs> of the temple and the date line which we have to stick to that is 31st of december 23 so today 3500 labor is working day and night wow which is working on all sites mm-hmm. uh they are not all working here i if i get the chance i'll explain you ji please do that uh, yeah. what all uh, uh-huh. uh, is happening the this is the co- main construction going on today of the ground floor mm-hmm. which we hope to complete by december 2023 that is just one month after mm-hmm. they will have the mandapa the shikhar will not be there because shikhar can only come up when the first and second story hmm. is built okay. so this will not be seen but there is another structure which is important and that is the lower plinth hmm. the lower plinth just below the ground floor is where the story of ram will be sculpted in stone Okay. About hundred murals of stone would be fixed there, and that will tell the story of Ram. Pictorially or written? 
No, no, pictorially. Pictorially. Yeah, nothing written. It is being carved out, and the different art people, the sculptors, are already doing that work. So, birth of Ram to everything, one vase. And... Ra yes, right okay. up to return to Ayodhya hmm. and his coronation. Hmm. So that is being done here hmm. in this. B below that lower plane, hmm. there is a very interesting construction story and engineering challenge. The first thing is foundation. Hmm. The foundation of the temple. So, after the soil test, it was noted that perhaps maybe few hundred years back, Saryu was passing through this place. Oh. Almost touching the palace. So, clay soil was then? So, yes. The soil, because of that, was not a very stable soil. Oh. So the experts said that the pile foundation would not be suitable because of that. Okay. So what we were advised by IIT Chennai, who are one of our advisory members, that please remove, dig 15 meters deep, in the entire area, hmm. remove the soil, just remove the soil and fill it with the another soil which is called re-engineered soil. Okay. This re-engineered huh. soil is the recommendation is a mix. Hmm. The quality of which is that in about 14 days time, hmm. each layer hmm. which is being put, that converts in itself into a stone-like quality. Achha. So the foundation itself is, you can take it, is made of stone. Okay. On that, we have got the raft, which again is about two and a half meter. Mm -hmm. On that, we have got granite plinth, which again is another meter and a half in width. Mm. And over that, the laying of the stone, Bansi Pahadpur stone, Hmm. which is the temple. Okay. So the temple has come up after the construction of foundation, the raft and plinth. And why was it done with such care was because Central Building Research Institute, Rurki, who are also again our uh -huh. consultants, they were responsible for checking that it should be able to undertake an earthquake which will be 50 times of all records till now. Hmm. So right from Nepal to Ayodhya, the earthquake intensity was measured till now, historically. Then it was simulated in the laboratory. And that strength was provided to this foundation raft and over that the stone. That is why we are, we at least would like to believe that what we have done would last for thousand years. Wow. So this so is... So one question before yeah. you go further. You said that uh, the soil, this soil came from se? One, uh, which you brought in. Dusra, um, if in case there is flooding of the Saryu River, can that affect uh, the temple? Good question. Uh, soil, of course... You see, a separate soil was filtered and that was mixed with certain chemical and also with little bit of cement, a special cement for that was mixed and that is how that soil was made. Okay. And that soil was a layer by layer it was brought. Huh. It was then compacted for about two, three days. Uh -huh. Then a sample was taken once the sample was approved that, okay, this has a quality, then another layer was put. So in the foundation, such 47 layers have been put. Okay. And that makes 15 meters. Oh. So that is how uh, it has been, uh, the soil has been put there. In the entire area, in the, okay. entire area of the temple. Okay. Yeah. And the uh, Saryu River? Yeah. The issue of the flood was also checked. And the present, uh, again, uh, public sector undertaking, 
which is a research lab of CSIR, mm -hmm. they have now confirmed that this area, the also the uh, level of it, the ground level, on which it is situated, is completely free of any flood which can come in Ayodhya. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that is protected. Okay. Yeah. Now we come to the question of uh, which you were saying that extra laborers have been brought to complete the work so that it's done uh, with the deadline is met. Where did they come from? Were they like, are they expert carvers? Uh, I, I saw one interview in which you said that many have come from Orissa yeah, and yeah. from Rajasthan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where all have they come from? Uh, you see the entire construction, hmm. as I mentioned, we are engaged here in constructing. Then there is another construction which is this called Parkota. This Parkota, the cost of this Parkota is 200 crores more than the cost of the temple. Oh. That is the size of the Parkota. In fact, the temple is in about two and a half acres. But when the Parkota will be constructed, it will become eight and a half acres. That's uh, like a corridor. Yeah, that's like a corridor of which the outer wall will be completely in some manner, you can say, it protects the temple. No one can enter from anywhere except the eastern gate because of this parkota. And this inner wall of the parkota opens towards the temple and this is open. So the people who will do the parikrama of the temple mm -hmm. will be doing the parikrama like this. So this is called Parkota. And then there are constructions such as on a Kuber Tila, which is a very high point, mm -hmm. which is not here, you can see, because it is only up to Parkota. The Jatayu is there. Okay. A statue of bronze, huh. which is being made now, ready now for installation. It is 15 feet in height and 20 feet in width, and the Jatayu is looking towards the temple. So he is in a kind of a meditation towards Lord and is standing there. Where is the uh, Jatayu uh, uh, statue being made? In yeah. India? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, there is a famous uh, person, a sculptor, his name is Ram Sutar. <laughs> So he, they are doing okay, it. Okay, the reason yeah. is because in Southeast Asia you see so many uh, Jatayu statues and they are so they are so phenomenal. That's why I asked that where from they are not No, 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 no. Not that no, there no, is no. anything wrong, yeah. but I'm just yeah. saying that yeah. it would be interesting. So hmm. that is also, there is a Kuber Tila. Then there is a huge building which can accommodate 5,000 devotees hmm. at any point of time which is called Pilgrimage Facilitation Center. In this thing? Itself? Within the premises. Okay. Outside Parkota. Outside, okay. That is also. So 3,500, I mentioned that only to sort of uh, emphasize that the labor which is engaged, at the moment we are tackling about five, six constructions. Not just this. Not okay. just this, not just this, okay. but about five, six constructions in the 71 acre area, okay. which will be there. Okay. So, so um, uh, my original question is, uh, where did the laborers come from? Yeah. How were they selected? Uh, and who selected them? Larsen Tubro are our constructing agency. Mm -hmm. They are the implementing agency. Okay. And their work is being monitored by Tata Consultant of Engineers. Mm -hmm. So, they are responsible for selecting for each thing, artisans are different. For iconography work, what is called, you know, to Hindi, Roop Kaam, mm -hmm. where the small mm. figures are created mm. on pillars. Okay. So the, that carving is done at the spot here. Oh. There are 390 pillars in this temple. Each temple has got about each pillar 30. Has. Yeah, yeah, each pillar has about... 30 such um, statues. Ha, ha, ha. So they are, will be carved and the people who are expert in that are from Orissa. Okay. 
so they have come from there hmm. in placement of the stone the labor from rajasthan has shown better expertise skill hmm. than others placement bole to wo ground pe no no the, the you see the most important thing is since the temple is of stone only ha uh ha -huh. and the stone is one stone is placed then another stone oh, then you said third stone the fourth no stone no iron ha huh. and no iron only copper clips are there ha uh ha -huh. to ensure that they are properly fixed over each other okay but there is no such thing that we have a groove and then we get the stone fixed there in the groove no it is the manner in which the stone is being placed one over the other mm -hmm. and that is checked by central building research institute that there is no space left between the two stones mm -hmm. that is the work with rajasthan uh, people can do better okay. so we got from rajasthan some from saharanpur mm -hmm. etc Hmm. so i mean different people have come to participate in the construction of the temple largely of course from western india maharashtra hmm orissa gujarat rajasthan okay you see aastha to sab ki rahegi mandir ke liye hmm. but there are some people who want to say ki mere state ka kuch hai kya everybody will want that right so you said that one of the statues is being done with a stone from mysore or uh, so obviously people from tamil nadu which there are so many who come right abhi bhi aate hain wahan pe i have seen shradhalu aate hain to wo sochenge andhra wale sochenge hamara kuch hai kya northeast wale sochenge hum humko bhi chahiye because everybody has aastha to towards lord ram so will there be uh, some element of everything and then कोई सोचेगा दैट शबरी का कुछ है क्या जटायु अगर है तो जटायु का कुछ है केवट वाले सोचेंगे केवट का कुछ है सब लोग अपना सोच रहे हैं कि रिप्रेजेंटेटिव है इट शुड बी डेफिनेटली इनफैक्ट इन माय कन्वर्सेशन फ्यू इंटरव्यूज विद प्राइम मिनिस्टर ही वाज वेरी इम्फेटिक that every person from every nook and corner of this country when he enters this temple he should not see this temple as a eastern indian temple or a northern indian temple hmm. or a southern temple he must see this is a temple of the last reference as far as the faith is concerned hmm. he was particular about it so the first thing is that all those 4 lakh and more bricks which came hmm. from about 5 lakh villages all over the country hmm. that has been placed here in the foundation amazing all of it has been placed in the foundation along with the engineered soil and we first obtained the report from iit chennai that it will no way compromise with the strength of the foundation hmm. and that has been placed okay so that answers your at least a fraction of your anxiety huh. that every state in some manner is represented right every there village is represented yeah, if that is how it is every village is represented uh, also there were objectives of social harmony ji because uh, i mean i'm sorry but that is important to tell you many people believe that ram attained the status of maryada purushottam only during his ban government when he was exiled when he went to the jungle for 14 years mm -hmm. that's where he attained the highest ethical lessons for governance and even for the universe mm. so mm. obviously social harmony was one of the objectives mm. and how is that represented you just mentioned nishad he met sabri ma he met ahilya so many people whom he interacted with it was not just a meeting hmm. somewhere in that was a message hmm. somewhere in that was a message that every person in the society is equal to god is acceptable to god 
is dear to God. Ji. So we are going to have seven temples here. In, in the, yes, in, in this area, just outside Parkota, there will be separate temples, not together. Seven separate temples will be built for starting with Mahars Balmiki, okay. then Vashisht, then Nishad Maharaj, then Sabri Mata, Ahilya, and like that, seven okay. of such temples are to be built. All taken together, and the ultimate objective is, you see, this is the Eastern Gate. Ji. So, our aspiration is, and let us say it will be a reality, we will, after this, at some distance here, we will construct, like in South India, you have the welcome gate arch, dwar. which is hmm. dwar, which is there. So that will be built so that anybody from South who enters immediately identifies that the construction here is what they have in Southern India also. And a Gopuram, I'm guessing. That is the Gopuram. Yeah. That's the word. Gopuram is the right word for yeah. that. Yeah. So, so that will be constructed here. Okay. What are the flags in this uh, uh, thing? They they to... all represent the flag represents the Suryavansi okay. flag hmm. because the Lord belonged to that Ichyasu. I am unable to pronounce correctly. B bunch <laughs> and that <laughs> is. Kaise nahi pronounce kar sakte. <laughs> <laughs> and huh. that is the bunch to which he belonged, uh -huh. and therefore. All these flags are of that. Right. So, what is the role of the Sri Ram Janbhubhumi uh, Tirth Kshetra Trust? Now, um, the Prime Minister appointed you, uh, I'm guessing, to speed up the process <laughs> uh, and to be the overarching uh, person in, you know, to coordinate everything. What does this trust do? Are they to see ki dharma nusar sab kuch hona chahiye uh, and riti paddati, all this should be followed because usually one expects that and uh, the funds uh, are they overseeing the funds uh, who who does all that my existence came from the supreme court judgment hmm. the judgment and says that there will be a construction committee hmm. which will be headed by some person so that is where i am appointed as chairperson and in that capacity i am member of the trust hmm. so that is the position ex officio the trust is an autonomous registered body and it is headed by a president of the trust or chairman you want to call it and there is general secretary there is a treasurer and other trust members and it functions like any other autonomous society hmm. and they are responsible for the administration not during construction but they will be responsible forever oh. they are responsible to ensure that the management takes place they will ensure that the crowd management is proper. They will ensure that the pilgrims have the facility which is required. They will ensure that the funds are properly used for the purpose it is intended. So entire thing and it will be audited also. Okay. So the trust functions in some manner because it's a charitable trust and it obviously as the charitable trusts are, they are uh, exempted from tax and all that. So they are responsible for presentation of their annual budget, annual expenditure and audit. Not a single pie has come from any government agency for the construction of the temple. That Our will not come also. Okay. Everything which has come and the collection of fund till now, which is a unique cooperation of the people of India, from almost again every village of India, about 3,500 crore has been collected. Okay. And it is there in the accounts of the trust. So, and they are responsible for it. Small and large sums have come in from? Mostly it has come from small people. A coupon was given per 100 rupees. About, I am told, that more than a lakh voluntary workers, they were given the receipt books. They went round the various panchayats. 
they talked to the people and those who contributed, they collected money. They then deposited that at the district level, then to the state level and then to the uh, and that's accounts. a pan-India uh, program that was done. Completely, yeah. More than four lakh. In fact, one estimate is that more than five lakh villages were contacted or people went there, explained the purpose of the temple and then said that if you wish to donate anything, you are welcome to so do So then that. anybody who feels that it's an eastern or northern temple knows now that the brick was also something which came in from different uh, lakhs of, uh, you know, people worked on that. The bricks came from different parts of the country. The money for construction came in from all parts of the country. So it is representative of a pan-India <coughs> effort that went in into uh, building this. Uh, security, sir, could you tell me how secure and what are the arrangements which are being made that it will it will be absolutely 100% secure because everybody knows that you know there's yes, a history yes, to it yes, and yes, yes. a there past a and a present and it's a future a soft target g so the security is in two parts one is the security within the temple or within the building premises that is entirely that of the trust the trust will have its own arrangement Mm -hmm. um, for ensuring that everything goes as per their plan, their scheme. But the entire security that has been entrusted to government of Uttar Pradesh, mm. and they have formed a special, like, you know, SPG here mm. in Government of India, which takes care of VIPs, they are have formed a special uh, wing within the police system which will be responsible for the security of certain specified temple this is one of them okay and they have already placed those constables now in the within the temple premises right so now uh, let me get to the part about uh, how you were picked and chosen <laughs> for this task uh, you hung up your boots uh, in uh, 19 uh, in 2019 and uh, you must have thought that I will do gardening. So then you get, uh, you get this. How did this come? I mean, it has to be a divine intervention. Nahi to, to get this uh, task. Uh, it Honestly, I have mentioned that other interviews also. Um, I really never thought that this task will come my way. Uh, because... The judgment was also not there. Mm. So there was no opening. There was no question. To tell you the truth, people of my generation, even your generation, younger generation, and many generations who have gone, they never ever thought that the Ram temple will be a reality. I agree. It was yeah. not there. Correct. The dream came true only after 2014-15 that there is a possibility of a temple. Because it had come up to the Supreme Court level, there were all kinds of efforts for reconciliation that Supreme Court sponsored. It didn't come through. Again, there was disappointment. But then finally, unanimous judgment. So when the judgment came, there was a position which was there for the Chairman Construction Committee. Uh, I just, I was casually talking to Mr. P.K. Mishra, who is the principal secretary now. And I mentioned to him that, Mr. Mishra, you have uh, given me the chairmanship, that is, Prime Minister has given me the chairmanship of the present Pradhan Mantri Sangrahale and Library, which is good enough. But maybe that's not the kind of thing I was expecting. Mm -hmm. And in my very casual conversation, because in my mind, the thing which was working was some kind of a governorship or something like <laughs> that, which normally comes to a yeah, civil right. servant. Yeah. So I said, well, you can think of the Ayodhya temple. Mm. He perhaps mentioned that to the prime minister. Mm. And then the Prime Minister was, uh, in a way, this was information to him that uh, I would be willing to work. 
he asked the home minister to verify with me check with me whether such a job would be acceptable so i got a call from him hmm. that hmm. would you like to take this hmm. work hmm. and i said yes hmm. but at the end of the day i do believe what you said that it was all divine it came almost everything in about 10 12 days the chairmanship of this construction committee and something which was never thought of something which had never occurred in my mind and that came my way so yes uh, it is true it is uh, divine blessings uh, in fact uh, i was once talking to ma amrita anand mai you mm. may know yes. she the famous the hug you know person. the uh, yeah the uh, lakhs and millions of people have been hugged and blessed Best. by her ji so i mentioned to her that i am doing this she immediately smiled and said that this is the job she used the word samarpan karke pura kar sakoge meaning by just surrender now to the lord hmm. then only you can complete this work if you don't you cannot complete this work and the surrender meant that you must now not be unduly perturbed or disturbed by some criticism by some let's say people who come in the way and stop the progress so just do it with full samarpan hmm. so frankly that is the message that i am trying to live with submerge yourself in the task that's all yeah right yeah so uh, i have uh, i've seen you uh, in various uh, working in various capacities uh, you know when you were abroad when you were in india uh, as as an ias officer uh, the skills of an ias officer is you know on if you were to just broadly say <laughs> is systems and uh, you know to work uh in those systems but this requires you to break systems create new systems uh your expertise was civilians and ordinary people ke sath politicians politicians and ordinary <laughs> right those pathways these are new pathways so kahan se wo skills aayi aapki pata nahi hai aayi bhi hai ki nahi i don't know uh but yes this was totally different hmm. the first challenge was there right in the first month when i suddenly realized that everybody i was interacting with people of ayodhya and the trust and everybody so they all rightly thought very rightly thought they had done the agitation they had fought for the temple hmm. and now when the job has come for the construction of the temple <laughs> it should go to hai. them ha <laughs> correct yes. it should not come to a person like me do you are not really a delhi wala you are from up <laughs> yeah, also yeah i am but, but they wanted somebody who is part of them correct okay and it's understandable yeah huh. so there was little bit of adjustment issue uh it did take uh, about month or two hmm. to define that where you stand and where i stand hmm. and then we got used to so it's a, it's a, it's a situation where the strange bed fellows do survive <laughs> okay so but then i guess uh, the weight of the uh, thing was that you know it it was loaded in your favor because the prime minister picked you so everybody knows you mr modi's man there <laughs> so i guess that made matters uh, to it could be it could be i i would not say that um, hmm. that is not the perception is there very correct hmm. perception i would say hmm. that they think that this appointment has been done by the prime minister which is true yeah which is true there is no doubt about it because right. it mentions in the trust huh. that i'll be there but the adjustment issues are not just with the people who are of ayodhya it was a question of team work let me tell you the biggest challenge and if it becomes successful it will be not because of me it will be because of the team work which has developed the culture which has developed i have to speak to lnt i have to talk with tce tata consultants 
I have to talk with other architects. I have to talk with various ministries. So it was coordination. The, the, I would say the blessed part of this was that wherever I went, whosoever I met for any cause, with any request, it was forthcoming without any question. Hmm. I mean, I don't have to give example whether it was railways, whether it was police in Uttar Pradesh for the movement of trucks or railways for the movement of granite from the southern India or supplies of different stones from Rajasthan. From Sri Lanka also, sir? Uh, Sri it's Lanka, come. of course. Uh, se jo sita ka yeah, thing they gave ka. that a uh, small yeah. piece. But uh, what I mean is like it's a collective effort yeah. of so many people. Yeah. Like, but to coordinate all that, a massive, massive uh, task which was on your shoulders. I was fortunate. But I... Were you scared a little bit, sir? Ki agar na ho paaye... I am. I think at the moment I am worried now okay. because of the time frame. Time frame. Yeah. yeah, I am at the moment definitely concerned that I have to deliver by 31st of December 23 and later by 24. Right. There the progress is not all that according to my calculations. So huh. I am little concerned. So the when the work started, I was not so scared. I had faith in God and I have faith in God. So I thought things will come. And uh, somewhere I think I am only an instrument. Hmm. I am an instrument for something which God has willed. Hmm. So there is nothing more to, as far as my appointment is concerned. Just an instrument, just a medium to see that it is constructed. So uh, our younger generation, I mean, you you know, you brought up that thing that your generation, my generation, usse pehle ke our parents' generation, un, they won't have envisaged something like yeah, this. Yeah. That hoga ki nahi hoga, nahi manenge, courts nahi manengi, uh, ye jo dharmik sansthan hai, wo, they won't come on the same page, hoga hi nahi kabhi, you know. And then the the politics of it all, one political party, <laughs> the second political party making fun of the other party, ki tum to sir manifesto mein laate ho, hoga kabhi nahi. I've also been part of that where I've questioned leaders ki tum bolte kya ho, karte to ho nahi. You know, yes, I mean, it, it appeared yeah. almost in all election manifestos manifestos, of the party. Yeah. Yeah. So I've also been part of that skeptical gang which thought that it will never get made. Ki kuch aur hi bana do. <laughs> I even remember, sir, that when I used to do the, uh, I used to do news for uh, Doordarshan in those days and when the Babri Masjid fell, uh, the very next day I was voicing a story for the news uh, thing and I was told that uh, to call it Jo Dhancha Gir Gaya Tha. Usi Din, and this is a Congress government which was in power. I was immediately told that you will not say it in the mosque. You will say it in the mosque. You know, so those who think that it's, you know, uh, it was just the BJP, no, the Congress government too took ownership the very next day to what happened. Uh, so I want to come back, sir, to, to your years. The younger generation may not know about your links with Uttar Pradesh. People might, you know, the younger generation might think, Abhi gaye hai, Mishra ji, <laughs> Uttar Pradesh. Nahi jante ki aap, uh, you were private secretary to Mulayam Singh ji, jo uh, chief minister the. You were with Kalyan Singh ji, jo chief minister the. Us vakt ke baare mein, us daur ke baare mein bataiye, and its links with Ayodhya, and what happened then, with Mulayam Singh ji, with Kalyan Singh ji. Uh, my, I was principal secretary to Mulayam Singh Ji. Uh, yeah, principal, sorry. And, Not private secretary, uh, uh, principal Singh. Mulayam Singh Ji very strongly believed that this dispute is not good for the communities and therefore we must not recreate history. He was strongly of the view that the issue of, uh, you know, Ram born and born at that very place is a, something which cannot be pro is not proven. In fact, I re recall in one of the smaller meetings where the chief minister was not there, uh, one of the ministers joked 
कि आप तो अभी कहेंगे कि वहाँ सीता रसोई है वहाँ सीता जी भिंडी की सब्जी बनाती थी यू सी देर इज ए प्लेस सीता रसोई वेरी क्लोज विच इज देयर एंड वी आर गोइंग टू प्रिजर्व कंजर्व दैट सो दैट भवन बन रहा है वहाँ पे रसोई का ना दैट जेंटलमैन सेड दैट वॉट प्रूफ डू यू हैव सो येस इट इज इट वॉज एन इश्यू यू आर सिटिंग इन दैट मीटिंग येस आई वॉज देयर and it was an issue but then i suppose gradually the country also realized that this dispute must get settled and the only way to settle this is through the judicial process the legal process so us waqt uh, jab ye sab jab ho raha tha you were principal secretary when that the car sevaks yes yes i was there i was sitting in the control room when they attacked yes hmm. not not when the babri masjid fell no, down no the car sevak attack when the first car sevak agitation took place sir you river mein kood gaye the brothers died yeah. yes. because of the firing i was very much there and i recall the commissioner calling me uh, almost repeatedly hmm. that there is such a crowd here that it is you can't just cannot estimate and you cannot say from where they are coming they were coming from all directions all villages they were just concentrating to ayodhya hmm. it was and it was in a way challenge to what the police then had claimed that not a bird will reach there yeah parinda kar, par nahi marega hmm. that claim was in 24 hours that was belied and you could see the attack on the place it was only on the appeal of the workers the leaders of the agitation that the car sevaks yes uh, on that bridge they crossed that yeah, bridge yeah yeah they crossed yeah. they reached they were right there yeah but only after the appeal from the leaders of the movement that they decided to withdraw hmm. the first time yes uh, and of course the but did you at that time feel that uh, mulayam singh ji didn't realize or that this is too big even for him now he was worried huh. he was worried because he thought that it will be very difficult to control hmm. but then there is you know in in politics there is a commitment hmm. of a certain position and very few can then introduce corrections in that process hmm. once you take the path he had taken the path in which opposition to the temple was part of his administrative arrangement part of his let us say running governance issue that there must not be temple constructed at this stage and then comes kalyan singh ji and uh, he doesn't replace you <laughs> usually aise hi hota hai na chief ministers aate hain wo replace kar dete hain uh, but he uh, had you there um, at that time what happened sir us waqt when you were with kalyan singh ji mere ko samajh nahi aata that I just feel history was not fair to Kalyan Singh ji. <laughs> Somehow I feel that what happened. Kalyan Singh ji, um, as long as I was there, I was there till about 1992. Hmm. And uh, Kalyan Singh ji believed, of course, no doubt about that, that the temple has to be constructed. He was committed that he would yeah. deliver the temple, and in his own manner. he had promised the government of india that there will be no disturbance but the temple will be constructed yeah it did not come through and when it came the when the babri masjid fell he was very much the chief minister hmm. i must say to his credit not many know that when the police and the central police particularly asked permission to fire he refused the home secretary of that time asked him that look the fire firing is now necessary kalyan singh as a brave chief minister said bring the file write whatever you want to recommend then i will write that i am ordering that there will be no firing mm. so he did write the file contains his order that no bullet will be fired on the crowd of god sevaks 
So that was his faith and belief. Hmm. Of course, the temple came into being after the judicial intervention. Hmm. But Kalyan Singh was of the firm view that if he was given few more years, he would have delivered in a peaceful process. But then the government was, you know, dismissed, hmm. suspended and later dismissed. So he had to go. Where were you when the Babri Masjid came down? When Babri Masjid came down, I was chairman of Greater Noida. Okay. I was transferred in September of that year and the, it fell in December. Why did you fall out of favor with Kalyan Singh Ji? Oh, not at all. No? Not at all. Okay. Oh, I, I, I mean, there is no question. He, okay. was, he was a very sad person. When uh, in the middle of the night, there were two, three other ministries and ministers. I was called and they said that would, by that time, my family had shifted to Delhi because of my children's education. Mm -hmm. So they s said that, would you like to go closer to Delhi because now your family is not here? Well, I realized that perhaps there are greater things at work. And so I said, yes. I would be happy if I am given anything in Noida and Greater Noida. So, so I became chairman. If you had been, I mean, looking back uh, at your career, uh, if you had continued as principal secretary uh, with Kalyan Singh Ji, would you have advised him differently uh, on that day uh, when the Babri Masjid came down? No. I would have definitely advised him that there should be no firing. Hmm. For the simple reason that you cannot fire a crowd of lakhs, not thousands, and you, you cannot control. And there is another factor to it. Even those who were responsible for law and order, I am speaking particularly of the police, majority of them believed in some manner or the other. Their duty was different, but their faith was different. Yes. That was, in fact, you, if you recall the events, that evening after the firing when Kothali brothers died, all the constables in, the, in their mess did not take food. That is the earlier incident. Earlier the incident. The Saryu incident. Yeah. Hmm. They did not take food. So that was the kind of sentiment. I do not think a crowd of this nature hmm. could have been handled in the manner. I mean, calling military, of course, is an option. But that option would have meant thousands maybe mm -hmm. not there, may yeah. not live. Mm. So the option was very clear mm. for the chief minister now to accept what was happening. The uh, police force in both the incidents, when Mulayam Singh Ji was chief minister and when Kalyan Singh Ji was chief minister, the police was terribly uh, disturbed, divided. Uh, some, of course, you know, that it's an order, it's a duty, have to do, will do. Some who were saving the media, saving the car sevaks, uh, doing things which were probably not their order, but going beyond the call of duty. How was the IAS? You're from the IAS. How was the IAS uh, dealing in both the incidents? Uh, second time, of course, I was not there because I was transferred. But first time, I do recall that when the secretariat employees during lunch hour were protesting mm. and they were demanding that the temple should be constructed mm. there and the government should not be so aggressive against the agitators. Uh, a very strong group of IS officers mm. wanted a discussion with the chief secretary mm. and a meeting was called by the, chief, the then chief secretary. Um, to explain that why IS officers must, it is call of duty and they must not at all get into the faith issue, they must do what is required by the government. So the senior officer sat, I was very much there in that meeting and the chief secretary addressed the officers and called upon them that look, we are not to decide what is now the final decision. Hmm. We have to implement what is the final decision. And therefore, guys, you go and work as is required. So, this kind of training forge mein hoti hai. When the Golden Temple action happened, it was the same thing which 
you know the the commanders then had to tell their men that if any of you don't want to do this because your faith doesn't permit it step aside and nobody <clears throat> stepped aside they all were like this is my call of duty i have to do it but ias me wo training to hoti nahi hai na <laughs> that kind of training i mean how do you keep your faith apart and how do you keep what kind of training i'm not saying that nahi hai training i am presuming ki nahi hai this training comes from academy days okay I Lal Bahadur Shastri Academy yes, uh, in Masuri. I recall that my life, my belief, my the way I was conducting myself completely changed after I got into the academy. Hmm. And from there on, the only thing which was injected in my mind was: you have to serve the state where you are. You have to serve the country where you are. And there is a democracy. there is a political system and you have to work with them and in many respects you have to uh, recognize that you are subordinate to them i think this training comes from academy and later also you imbibe it from your seniors hmm. so uh, uh, it may not come in the manner that you said the army people hmm. but i think devotion to call of duty and devotion to whatever the system demands the governance demands that is even now i'm confident it's your dna yeah yeah it's okay. in the dna it's yeah. in the dna right so you were in the prime minister's office for 5 years um tell us about the working style of the prime minister because you saw him in such close contact for hours together every single day for 7 years unless he was traveling abroad i believe you didn't travel with him Never. in his you didn't okay so when he was not travelling about when he was here tell us about jo karyashaili hoti hai pradhan mantri ki uh, you have you've seen closely other prime ministers also uh, in the sense that you were not in the pmo but you've worked you've interacted because you were very senior uh, government functionary so tell us what it was like why firstly why did you get chosen for the job as principal secretary uh, that itself was like uh, uh, क्या खासियत है कि वो प्राइम मिनिस्टर जो हैं ही हैज चोजन मिस्टर मिश्रा ही इज वेरी पर्टिकुलर दैट ही वॉन्ट्स ओनली मिस्टर नृपेंद्र मिश्रा सो वाई यू वॉट डू यू थिंक वॉज द रीजन एंड वॉट वॉज इट लाइक दोज फाइव ईयर्स लुक आई हैड नेवर मेट द ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर बिफोर आई वॉज चोजन दैट इज आई रिकॉल ट्वेंटी एथ ऑफ मे टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन वेन आई वॉज कॉल्ड इन गुजरात भवन why was i chosen how he got to know about me perhaps their group of ministers senior ministers who met him in ahmedabad hmm. they must have suggested panel of names that's his style okay the prime minister in fact i i could learn that from him the very first time when i interacted after becoming principal secretary hmm. i along with cabinet secretary went with names of secretaries for certain administrative arrangements hmm. and we 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 thought he will say yes hmm. so we read certain such should come here certain such should come here so he looked at us and said look i don't want this you cannot expect orders from me like this please come with panel of names i will make the selection hmm. and then you will pass the order so that is the process going to be okay so i am very sure ha huh. even for the selection of the principal secretary he must have had panel of names to be considered they were all there in some manner or the other they, there was a speculation already going on huh. and then he made his choice um i was not uh, sort of offered the job the very first time when i met him hmm. so he um, hmm. just called me hmm. and asked me to do some work hmm. never refer to you had point. already retired by then oh yes yes superannuated yeah yeah, yeah yeah i had superannuated hmm. and i had even completed my after superannuation job of telecom regulatory chairman hmm. that was also completed yes so he said could you please do something hmm. uh, so i said i'll try so he said you are being given a room in gujarat bhavan hmm. you come in the morning and hmm. after 3 days i'll call you again hmm. so 
So I did my work, whatever was assigned, and then I went to him. I was summoned. I recall Mr. Jatli, late Mr. Jatli was sitting there. Amit Shah ji was sitting there. Hmm. I made my presentation. Hmm. Uh, I am very sure one thing must have disappointed him because I didn't present it to him on his screen. As a PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> I had taken hard copy given to all four of them and selected. So I'm very sure the tech savvy that he is, huh. he must have thought this man is not tech savvy. <laughs> yeah, I'm 100% sure about okay. it. And compared to him, I was not. Hmm. So he said that my proposal was discussed briefly. Then I was uh, dismissed from there. Hmm. They must have then taken a political view about hmm. the matter. Hmm. And in the evening, I was called again, and the prince, he said, "Would you like to work?" With huh. me? So that is how the, I was selected. So why I was selected, I don't know, but perhaps. Uh, Did your colleagues all call you up and say, "Ki mat karna, <laughs> he's a hard taskmaster." Uh, no. Though, no. आपके बारे में भी ये कहा जाता था. If I may just share that, uh, that uh, it used to be said that. You used to have very strict deadlines, and अगर किसी ने तो शामत उसकी अगर नहीं हुआ तो your work style was somewhat similar, would you say? In terms of delivery, yes. Hmm. Uh, he believes in a certain time frame. Hmm. He goes all out to implement that. He is extremely receptive, even during implementation, to hear about the issues which are coming up. If we can resolve it, he resolves at his level even. So his is a very um, and something which is very special about his style in this is his modular approach. He doesn't climb the mountain. He goes step by step, step by step, and once he sees it has been achieved, he immediately shows you the next peak, then the third peak, and then the mountain. Hmm. so that is the way he takes you the moment you go and tell him that i have de delivered this you never get kudos from him because then he will say acha ab ye karna hai <laughs> ab ye karna hai hmm. so that is how he moves uh, i think as a person who is uh, in governance uh, implementing the programs in a in a, in a defined time manner perhaps i would rate the prime minister there's something special about him i i don't think it is fear element mm. that he will do something to the he has never punished any officer mm. so even that is not there but there is an element of uh, or you can say or whatever the officers felt during my tenure that the prime minister desires Certain time frame for implementation, and he would like it to be done. So, the, uh, from the outside as a journalist, one has observed that when uh, when Dr. Manmohan Singh, and all credit to him um, for all that he did uh, in his tenure, but when the Prime Minister gave orders, it wasn't necessary that the bureaucracy would do it. I'll be honest with you; I've seen both the Prime Minister's offices, PMO, of both the times, but when uh mr Nar because there were several layers of functioning in that pmo um it's even his principal secretary was working his staff was different uh his media advisors were different um the pmo itself was not as tightly knit as this pmo is and a directive from the pmo during D dr manmohan singh's time did not have the same weightage as a directive from the pmo during uh, prime minister modi's tenure in the first 5 years did you notice the difference because as an ias officer you worked in both did you notice that difference it was very clear hmm. i think the implementation and compliance was lot better during the time of prime minister modi uh, i don't think the threat worked i don't think there was any fear of punishment but there was an element or let us say every secretary mm. felt mm. that he is being observed 
not even by principal secretary hmm. he is being observed by the prime minister okay somehow his control on the progress of the projects and implementation of the program he was so well informed hmm. so well informed at times ahead of me as principal secretary that the secretaries in general believed that their performance is being observed and therefore they have to they will be answerable hmm. so that accountability and answerability was, was lot more effective hmm. when the prime minister modi was so uh, as soon as he became uh, pm and you were there in that team that first uh, speech from uh, redford when he talked about swachh bharat and then him going with the jhadu and then other ministers at that time i remember speaking to some joint secretaries and additional secretaries at that time who were like ye pradhan mantri kar rahe hain what is this why is he entering south block why is he coming and opening up our cupboards and telling us ki ye hatao wo hatao and we as journalists who have seen that mothballed files upar tak ja rahi hain was like acha hua you know we were taking perverse pleasure but and you know we were looking at all this that was happening so did they because they they're also from your service itself did they tell you that ye ab prime minister ko samjhao na kare there were certain discussions and mm. you know the secretaries and joint secretaries they are all intellectual i mean intellectually they are very very well equipped mm. therefore they could evaluate even the prime minister from their point of view mm. so there were initial remarks that this is perhaps not the function of the prime minister because he cannot do micro management yeah there is always this talk of micro management versus macro management Correct. and how far the prime minister should go or principal secretary i was even accused that uh, the principal secretary at times does lot of micro management mm. and he should leave it to the secretaries uh, but at the end of the day everyone had come to appreciate when they saw the delivery of the prime minister mm. when they recognized that if he meant the electrification of 1800 villages who which were left i mean i recall when he was reviewing the electrification of villages he was told that the total villages not electrified are 1800 and um, then at the end when he was con he normally after the meeting concludes hmm. all meetings he concludes so he said that look 1800 i know you guys can do it please don't come up with the excuse and i think he gave 3 to 4 months hmm. and all the villages were electrified Correct. and he even mentioned his uh, gujarat the experience don't just put the poles there don't just pull uh, put the wires there and don't uh, connect it because the next step hmm. he had already uh, decided about this step hmm. the next step was electrification of the uh, you know certain houses which belong to scheduled caste and scheduled tribes so the moment you say that all villages have been electrified the next test was that now please give connection to the poor to homes. the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe homes and you will be tested correct so is this connect with each program with the next program which i call the modular approach was extremely effective and also using technology i remember so one of the earliest documentaries that i was working on was uh, putting up the when the government said ki humne biogas plants lagaye hain yahan pe up mein itne lagaye hain bihar mein itne lagaye hain we sent the and said that documentary banao in pe when we sent the team there was none in some villages there was none no biogas plants had been set up out there sir hum documentary kaise banaye jab lagaye hi nahi biogas plant to so long shot pe laga ke bana do so this was a joke that i told mr piyush goel that you know you're talking about electrification unhone jhat se apna phone nikala he was the power minister at that time i think he took out the phone and he said look we have this app and in this app name any village you can name any village tap on that see and you will get the shot and he said this is what the prime minister had told us i need to see whether that village is has light or not so with the satellite technology of course when i am talking about a time biogas ka jab technology nahi thi hamare paas but now with that technology you could see whether that village has light or not 
यू नो सो दीज आर द माइक्रो मैनेजमेंट तो करना पड़ेगा यू नो काम चलाओ फोर्स डैशबोर्ड ऑन ईच मिनिस्टर टेबल हाँ that was the way to manage so even ministers and us yeah. i have to include myself we were not used to that kind of technology yeah which was enforced uh, okay so, so another question i have to ask is that i was told that there were just about 10 people who knew about demonetization were you one of those yes i suppose that what is stage perhaps only about five people knew. five that demonetization yes. and you knew about it yes you there's knew. no doubt about why it why did he want to do it i will not be surprised if i claim that i was the first person to know about it about demonetization yes and it was a practice. i mean his intent his intent his intent because he even uh, joked in the parliament about uh, jetli ji when jetli ji is unko bhi nahi pata tha nahi to fir aur logon ko pata lag well <laughs> that's, he, that's he, not he, true no he joked about it <laughs> in parliament it was a joke and even jetli ji laughed about it god rest his soul but uh, but it was i guess the trust uh, in you that when no, he no it had to be implemented hmm. and if the implementation had to take place then a thing like demonetization could not be implemented through the normal method of messages and you know each step was kept secret the printing of notes why it is being printed in this manner was a secret the total number of calculation of notes and its usage and distribution how it will be done was secret so here was a situation because there was the intent was that the black money we didn't succeed 100% on that everyone knows that there was such a huge exchange of black money into the white through the bank i often if you ask me that what do you think was your failure i will say one only one failure was i could not hmm. imagine Hmm. Uh, that the bank staff at a lower level hmm. will not cooperate with the intent of the government hmm. the exchange of notes hmm. took place hmm. in a very very uh, i would say surreptitious manner hmm. that uh, took place but yes not many people knew about demonetization hmm. it was discussed with a very small group i discussed with so i got the, the broad idea about the prime minister thinking of black money hmm. and then he said one such step could be this he knew that murarji desai had done it hmm. so he said read the files of murarji desai times we did that and then i had to consult few more colleagues of mine so one or two colleagues in the system of prime minister office and in finance ministry were consulted so you your number of 10 will perhaps come true at that stage okay um i have to get to this the when the prime minister tweeted about you when you said that i'm done and you wanted to leave um uh, that i want to ask you also why did you uh, say you want to leave and then the prime minister tweeted and he said when i was a new when i was new to delhi in 2014 he taught me a lot and his guidance remains extremely valuable amazing words <laughs> i don't recall a prime minister saying that about a principal secretary it must have really meant a lot to you well i have to say if you get his speech his speech on my farewell i couldn't believe i was in tears the cabinet ministers and secretaries to the government who were invited they couldn't believe prime minister spoke for 45 minutes and he spoke only about me hmm. no other word except me hmm. such was his sentiment hmm. so he had full faith in me there was no question of my not enjoying the faith but i think i mean i i carried the message to him that it's time i left because i had started feeling that perhaps prime minister may like to experiment with change hmm. one tenure was over another tenure had come hmm. so i was getting that feeling that uh, 
some kind of new trial for new set of officers may be his idea. Hmm. Because after all, uh, one does, you know, there is an organizational takeover in everybody. Hmm. In five years, I would definitely start thinking whatever I am doing is right. Hmm. This is the organization. It is the organization. In the first year, you beat the organization. Remaining four years, the organization beats you. Wonderful. <laughs> this is what happens. So, I am very sure, Prime Minister Sharp that he is, he must be thinking that perhaps if something new has to be done, a new experiment has to come. Reshuffle. Yeah, reshuffle. Sir, also I would think that uh, years of having worked with um, with politicians in very close contact, you were you're able to preempt what the boss wants. Is that it? Or second guess? Well, I suppose most of the officers get to understand their bosses. I mean, whether you are with the prime minister or with the minister, they do get. Uh, I mean, there have been many occasions where I went and. Even as a junior officer, I went and told my minister that you must get a change now. Hmm. Yeah. So what is it that when he says that his guidance was extremely valuable, he taught me a lot. If you were to just <laughs> randomly no, or no, it's only no. between you and him. No, no, no. It's very. You see, I would only tell him the background. If any decision had to be taken, I will tell him the background. I will tell him the administrative positions of bureaucracy, how bureaucracy will see that. Hmm. And there were occasions where I made the mistake. Hmm. I perhaps did not adequately advise him. I can mention that the first Land Acquisition Act, which was implemented, uh, it was implemented with the advice, aid and advice of ministers and myself mm -hmm. and some secretaries. It was withdrawn, if you recall. Mm -hmm. It was not implemented. Mm -hmm. The I mean, one yeah. ordinance, second ordinance, third ordinance was not passed, it lapsed. It was a mistake. The time for that kind of reform had not come. These reforms come and they become successful because the time comes. 1991, the reforms were successful because the time had come for that. Mm -hmm. Likewise, later reforms also, which happened during Prime Minister's time, there was a time for which it happened and it was. But in the case of farmers, yeah, I, was I think uh, we, we misread the farmer mood twice. Hmm. One, when I was there, the second time when the agitation took place, when the Prime Minister went public. Hmm. So, there are occasions when we have wrongly advised the Prime Minister. But the beauty of this Prime Minister is, he will never tell you. Hmm. When I went to tell him that, please do not issue the third ordinance on this matter, he looked at me. He said, you are telling me? Hmm. Never ever said that you are one who made the mistake and therefore I have to now allow it to lapse. Never mentioned that. No, there, I mean, everything was not 100% successful in all the implementations, but not even once he would use the word, you guys are responsible. The buck stops with yeah, him yeah, and yeah. he would take he the fall. He takes the full responsibility for what happens. Interesting. Uh, so, uh, one anecdote I must mention was uh, many years ago, uh, one uh, principal secretary to a former chief minister told me that wo chief minister bane the, badi, with a strange situation. Huh? To jab wo chief minister, bane, he came from a very rural background, not familiar with the capital city and its machinations or chief minister kaise aage aate hai. Uh, how does the guard of honor take place? Kaise hota hai? So the principal secretary was explaining carefully that jab aap aate hain, jab aap utarte hain, to aap jhat se logon se milne nahi jayenge. Aap ek kaide se jayenge. Aur wo dhoti pente the. To unko, main naam nahi lungi sir, par aap samaj jayenge because he was one of your contemporaries. So he said that मैंने चीफ मिनिस्टर को समझाया कि जब वो गाड़ी से उतरते हैं क्योंकि वो धोती पहनते हैं तो उसको ऐसे पकड़ के फिर उतरे नहीं तो यू कैन सी जो द बेर लेग सो उनको 
ये सब समझाया मैंने ही सज पर आई ऑल्सो न्यू दैट आई विल लास्ट ओनली वन ईयर बिकॉज एवरी टाइम ही लुक्स एट मी ही विल बी ही इट इज़ अ रिमाइंडर ऑफ द डेज वेर ही वॉज अनसोफिस्टिकेटेड एंड ही विल पोस्ट मी आउट सो आफ्टर वन ईयर ऑफ द टेन ईयर ही टोल्ड द चीफ मिनिस्टर कि आप मुझे सेंटर भेज दीजिए सो ही मूवड टू द सेंटर ना आई वॉन्ट आस्क यू दिस दैट हियर वॉज अ चीफ मिनिस्टर हु हैड एब्सोल्यूटली नो एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ डेली वेन ही केम हियर सर देर वर लॉट्स ऑफ पीपल सेंग अरे इन्हें तो आता ही नहीं है इन्हें तो कुछ पता ही नहीं है दिल्ली कैसे फंक्शन करेगी यू हैड अ चीफ मिनिस्टर हु केम इन हु वॉज इन हु हैड नेवर डन लोकसभा इट वॉज हिज फर्स्ट एंट्री इन टू पार्लियामेंट वॉट वर द डूज एंड डोंट्स दैट यू वर यू एज अ टीम वर नेविगेटिंग हिम थ्रू इन डेली आई थिंक ही वॉज वेरी वेल प्रिपेयर्ड वेरी वेल प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर द पोजिशन Mm-hmm. and he did not require any such briefing of course there were occasions when he was listened to for example a 15th august function has to take place so it is customary for people who are responsible for 15th august to make a presentation this is how you will enter this is where you'll go you will first go to you know the amir shaheed stump mm-hmm. then from there you'll go to gandhi ji shraddhanjali like that all that he heard but he never felt inadequate to his job hmm. and he had perhaps he was a step ahead let me just conclude this by one example uh when he uh, was getting briefing hmm. right in the first 3 4 days from the foreign the then foreign secretary because he had never handled Correct. international relations yes. he had handled all other things hmm. so she perhaps was uh, giving some kind of elementary lessons of the diplomacy hmm. and here was a person who had visited all the places who in grey hound had visited all the states of america he had gone to japan twice he had gone to beijing twice he had negotiated for the release of uh, some gujarati students yes. from china etc etc hmm. he had his own ideas he in fact it was his idea to call the leaders of the neighboring countries at the time of swearing in ceremony mm-hmm. it was never the suggestion of the foreign affairs acha it was entirely the suggestion of his which was implemented by mr ajit dowal who then was not national security advisor he mm-hmm. was still there in vivekananda mm-hmm. but he came the prime minister just consulted him about the feasibility and then he told him why don't you check with the informally with the leaders whether they will come or not hmm. so he sort of was very impatient with this training hmm. uh, briefing which was coming from the foreign secretary that temperamental mismatch between the foreign secretary and the prime minister uh, was very evident and it hmm. was clear that one has to go and obviously that will be the bureaucrat hmm. who will go and uh, that's the price he was ready for everything he knew what will be his foreign policy while briefing is required mm-hmm. background is required but i think the direction was mm-hmm. already predetermined mm-hmm. he knew what will be the direction of his foreign policy what will be the direction of the rural development what will be the policy for technology so mm-hmm. he was very very well prepared did were, were you surprised with that that he was so prepared or while meeting the team you knew that he has done meticulous homework on every sphere not surprised but sense of admiration hmm. that was always there every time one attended the meeting one always felt that he has learned something hmm that was always so um, towards the end i will just ask you uh, one of course uh, a se- w- when you left the pmo was there a sense of satisfaction or was there a sense a twinge of i could have maybe <laughs> done a little more what what was that feeling there was uh, you know um, i don't think there was any f- feeling of regret hmm. i don't think there was any feeling of loss hmm. i had done my tenure i knew the time is there for me to come out of the prime minister's office uh but 
on the issue of sense of satisfaction after every job mm-hmm. one feels that one could have done better if one was given the same job again that's such an honest yeah. view about that so that is very clear today i can do the district magistrateship better than what i did in hardoi and unnao and other places right. so it's a fact uh-huh. that there one is always inadequate to the level that he must achieve right a principal secretary to a prime minister is considered the gatekeeper in many respects uh, w- did you get that feeling that uh, that people thought you were overprotective of uh, of your uh, prime minister like some people used to say that when you were principal secretary to the chief minister that you know he keeps him cushioned and covered <laughs> hum mil nahi sakte because you know how uttar pradesh politicians are everybody wants to barge in into the chief minister's house and regardless whether it was mayawati ji whether it was mulayam singh ji i have seen that bade naraz hote hain with the with the bureaucracy ki humse mil humko milne nahi dete because you know they all considered that ye humne banaya bhai so do you get that feeling that uh, people you, felt that you about see, you this is a natural response because majority of the people don't know that officials and politicians both that each leader decides his evening program and next day's program himself independently okay i was never consulted in the office of the chief minister who to meet or not to meet hmm. there used to be one very uh, his his ps very close to him one mr goel who used to present the requests all the requests will be mention it will be shown to him and then he will tick mark connect on telephone give the appointment and then he will give the appointment but yes you are very right as she in the office of chief secretary i was accused that i don't allow the officers whom i don't like <laughs> to meet the chief minister it was not really true oh. i am honestly telling you in the case of the present prime minister it is totally different hmm. there is appointment joint secretary level officer who presents the matters pss here take down the note from him in the evening at 11 pm in the night that these these people he will meet he has his own views about who to meet in fact i recall you may know it or not the first time when he was visiting abroad like all previous prime ministers i carried the names of the press guys who will go with him <laughs> so he he looked at it and then didn't comment anything after about 2 3 hours again i said it is getting late why didn't you clear it so he said uh, i if i don't take any press person what will happen i said sir it will lead to bad relations with the press he said why the press in um, uh, these so called monarchs the um, of the press they will send their own representatives they they don't have to bother for the funds and just because you take them in the plane is not necessary so i said no sir this has been the convention etc then they are given certain treatment in the embassy he said nothing doing please note down nobody will go hmm. no press representative will go with me that's all hmm. so that was his decision it was final and to convey that is not your job is it not no. at all people okay. got to know i mm-hmm. don't have to give reason mm. because then the all other trips also there was no question of suggesting to him yeah my visit mm. i somehow felt that look he has discussed everything here what is it that i will contribute there when the foreign secretary and foreign ministers are generally with him yeah so when uh, the list went i said that maybe person mentioned that one may not be selected hmm. or picked up for this and two and three like that one was me hmm. he immediately accepted he said yes you must stay home you stay back here when i am abroad and that was it hmm. that became the order of the day the principal secretary the my predecessor after only about 3 months came to me mr nair i will use the, uh, give you the name pk nair and mr nair said nipi what have you done you are not going with the prime minister 
इट्स अ डिजास्टर यू आर इन्वाइटिंग योर डिसमिसल इन अबाउट सिक्स मंथ्स टाइम यू विल बी सुपर फ्लूअस इफ यू आर नॉट गोइंग विद द प्राइम मिनिस्टर आई सेट सर बट दैट इज वॉट आई हैव सजेस्टेड एंड एडवाइज हेम ई सर वेल आई हैव कम टू वॉर्न यू दैट्स अबाउट इट वॉज पर्पज ऑफ मीटिंग नथिंग हैपन एंड आई हैव सीन मिस्टर ब्रिजेश मिश्रा एज द आई थिंक वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पावरफुल प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरीज दैट आई हैव इन माई रिपोर्टिंग डेज दैट आई हैव सीन इफ यू हैव अ लॉन्गर एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ यू नो एंड ऑफकोर्स यू आर पार्ट ऑफ द सिविल सर्विस वी आर फ्रॉम द आउटसाइड सीन एट इन योर फिफ्टी सिक्सटी ईयर्स दैट यू हैव सीन द ब्यूरोक्रेसी क्लोजली हु डू यू थिंक वुड बी द मोस्ट पावरफुल प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी दैट यू हैव सीन सो फार वेल यू हैव नेम्ड बेस्ट मिश्रा Mr Mishra was powerful because of his relationship beyond the principal secretaryship hmm. with the Mr Bajpay. Uh, hmm. uh I would also name Mr A N Verma hmm. uh, as one who was very very uh, powerful and perhaps was powerful in the sense that he could carry the wishes of the prime minister to the secretaries very effective that was during rajiv gandhi's time no uh, also narsimha rao yeah ha ha oh if liberalization he, yes, he was the principal if he secretary. said that by tomorrow the cabinet note should come the cabinet note will come hmm. so that was the effectiveness of mr verma and the third of my time i would perhaps i was young though was the time when uh, mrs gandhi hmm. had mr dhar पीएन धर या या प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी ओके वाज मिस्टर नरेश चंद्रा प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी आई नो ही वाज कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी बट ही वाज ऑलवेज वेरी इफेक्टिव एंड ही आई थिंक हैड सेवरल डिफरेंट इंपॉर्टेंट टेन्योर्स ड्यूरिंग हिज थिंग आई थिंक ही वाज कंसल्टेड इवन आउट व्हेन ही वाज आउटसाइड द सिस्टम ही वाज कंसल्टेड लेटर ही वाज ब्रॉट इन फॉर अयोध्या ही ही रिमेंड वेरी रेलेवेंट इन द सिस्टम राइट सो डज does the because of the proximity to power does it ever feel sometimes that you get that uh, you know uh, secondary power because you're so close to the most important person in uh, the country well uh, i i would say that uh, this kind of uh, some kind of a message in your mind occasionally does pass by hmm that uh, you matter hmm i would not deny that Hmm. whether it converts itself the message into arrogance that depends on individual and how did you guard against that i don't know if i <laughs> no you never came the across other, as arrogant the others will uh, decide about it so i will leave it to the judgment of others right yeah. sir so on our behalf on ani's behalf uh, we thank you so much for spending this time with us explaining about the temple and good wishes to you all the best to you i need it <laughs> and we look forward to doing a darshan uh, when uh, everybody is allowed to uh, come there 23rd of december 2024 and darshan will begin before the prime minister no third uh, 23rd january i am wrong 23rd january yeah. right immediately immediately so as soon as the prime minister does it and immediately yes. for everybody else all the invitees would have the darshan the same day okay. and next morning onwards they, it will be open to all okay so we look forward it a dream come true to be able to do this darshan thank you so much thank sir you. thank, thank you. you thank you for the opportunity thank you Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of ANI podcast with Smita Prakash. Do like or subscribe on whichever channel you have seen this or heard this. Namaste, Jai Hind. Click here to watch the previous episodes.